Kyle, I have another fascinating game. This this game actually features opposite side castling. And it's Stockfish 7 on 4 core i7 machine against Leela on a 1080 graphics card. So provided by Gallagher, five minutes with three second increment time control. Let's have a look. The set opening position, uh, the semi Slav, which is very, very popular at the Super Grandmaster level and has influenced, I think, all levels of chess players. So one wants to know how to play this if White really has aggressive ambitions. Now e3 doesn't seem that aggressive, but it can be. On the follow-up, queen c2 here. We have bishop d2, so white's preparing an opposite side castling game. So I think it is instructive to check this game out. Uh, this is the, the last book move given. Black actually dares to castle kingside. So we have opposite, -sided, uh, opposite side castling. So you might not have... Uh, like this <laughs> if if you're playing the slav you want a solid peaceful game this is kind of kind of annoying so how to punish white well i believe i've learned a few lessons myself from this game about what is good maybe and not so good and how to try and open up lines here it seems leela's approach is actually to try and hit the center hard whilst opening up a file that's an important characteristic, it seems here. The first move, b5, seems fair enough to try and sacrifice a pawn. Or is it? Is it about trying to sacrifice a pawn to open up a file? The pawn is taken, uh, but there's no c takes b being played here, which is intriguing to me. I thought maybe to have some semi open b file pressure. But if we look at that position with c takes, we see that the center is really rock solid here. There's nothing that's going to be challenging that, that pawn center later. So just from that point of view, there's an element of solidity you might not want, or Lila maybe didn't want. That flagged up as a negative, maybe. If we look at this, knight takes, as long as white can survive things here, uh, white could take on d6 and play king b1. And it looks as though it's going to be hard uh, to attack white. Now, Lila's approach, yes, is very, very interesting. Uh, here by playing bishop b7. Um, more stuff can be potentially opened up now than on c takes. Um, <clears throat> well, we have king b1. Now, if white did dare to take on c6 here, this really helps black a little bit. Speed is off the essence sometimes. <clears throat> Speed is of the essence sometimes. So here, rook b8, black has a small edge. It seems as though there, there are potential attacking opportunities. And uh, white actually avoided that with king b1. And now again, you know, offering this c6 pawn with queen b8. But white wants to pursue its own attack and plays h4 to try and get things going on the king side. Rook c8, and now knight g5. So white really is just wanting to focus over here. Now, you might think c takes is worth thinking about because it pins the knight. This wasn't played, actually. Instead, c5, which echoes either to try and make the center less stable. With knight f3 to g5, the center is also a little bit wobblier than it was. So c5 kind of hits against that weakness of the last move. Well, it's a little bit off balance there by moving the knight, and that's hit that Achilles hill. If we look at this position with C takes instead, leaving the center solid, uh, this position is actually an even position. And look at the white center, it's very, very solid. Um, unless black can really prove something with just that semi file and what's going on here, it looks to be an even ish position. So we see c5, which yeah, that potentially threatens the very stability of white's central control at the cost of a pawn now. So this has become a real pawn sack. We have g4, white's trying to get something going over here. Uh, this is just doesn't bear thinking about losing that central pawn after knight takes. Black's pieces are absolutely beautiful. Black can still even open up files. And this, this bishop's also very dangerous on the diagonal. So for example, like this, uh, with d4, that bishop's really dangerous. Everything's like tactically loose here. It'd be a disaster area. 
um, most precise knight c e4 first before doing anything. So here, bang, bang, hitting the queen is a disaster for white. Uh, so yeah, it's interesting to me how it's as though blacks interested in two things simultaneously: hitting white center hard and opening up files. So uh, we have actually. So after g4, we have a6 trying to open up files. Bishop d3 was played trying to maybe, yeah, not playing b takes. Let's have a quick look at this. This is actually really in black's favor. It really helps black a little bit. Tempo is of the essence here. Knight b6 celebrates the absence of the light square bishop. So knight c4 to a3 check would be forking king and queen. So that kind of thing now threatening knight a3 check is very very dangerous. Um, the a2 pawn is a big issue here, and this is this is a disaster area where the center does crumble, and things just fall to bits here this, in these variations, these fictional variations. Uh, so that shows how the central pressure is really is really significant to the success of the attack. So I think Leela has a point to try and hit the center as well as open up a file. It's more ambitious than just trying to use the file with the white center solid. So we have here um, knight f8. Uh, there are some tricks here which are totally avoided by both knights reinforcing h7. So for example, a takes, there's some tricks. Bishop takes. And if here, then it's checkmate. And if king f8, then there's actually bishop g6. And all of a sudden, it's Leela with the spectator pieces turn up for the books, isn't it? And this is just the massacre for for Leela. She avoids this for, uh, in this game. I was going to say, thankfully, I'm a bit biased, aren't I? Towards Leela uh, winning, yeah, it would just be a massacre. <clears throat> Excuse the snorting there. <laughs> Got a bit carried away. Okay, so Knight F8 is rock solid here. Uh, but now White tries to suppress the, the opening of 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 files here on B takes here. I mean, this position again, it's just unpleasant for white. You can see that literally there's a simultaneous attack on the center and a2 potentially here. But this pressure building up with the idea of taking out the defender of a2 and hitting uh, a2, for example, this variation is a disaster for white. You can see how the pressure can build up and very be very difficult to defend. So white's trying to calm things down. But bishop c6, d takes, bishop takes, we have h5, bishop e7, dropping back. Now white plays h6, which, okay, installs a form pawn, <laughs> t-h-o-r-n. But unless white's going to crash through to the 7 for 8 francs, which seems unlikely here, there's a danger in this particular scenario where leaders getting the open files and white's just clogged up things over here. Leela slowed down this side of the board and is trying to accelerate that side of the board, which we've seen as a fundamental pattern before. You know, just blockade up where she might be weak and then speed up where she wants you know the centre of action to be, the opponent's king. Is that really happening here? It just seems blocked up here. So Queen takes B six, F four, as though maybe there's an idea to open up lines, but maybe it's a bit slow now. Rook A B eight. Knight F knight goes back. Uh, like 87 g5 so not even f5 is on the cards here I think there's a concern about things like knight c5 here and going into e4 so white's a little bit panicky with this move if we look for example at bishop c1 knight c5 and this position actually bishop a4 is dangerous uh, this this is really dangerous stuff And uh, I w uh, let's. I wish I knew about knight takes a4 to tell you. <laughs> the variation I've got here is b3. So knight takes a4. I think there's something naughty going on. But, uh, and I need to check that out. Uh, I'll, I'll put it in the pinned comment of the video. Excuse me for that. But I have b3 here as the main defense, which black crashes uh, through. Basically, here yeah, after Queen A5, uh, this is a devastating attack that's really crashing through 
in these lines on the B farm. Uh, for example, like this, big advantage. Uh, if if you want that as an exercise for yourself, by the way, that line, uh, why why it was not possible, please uh, post to the comments and 100 points for the first successful answer there. So um, let's have a look though at G5. So this is like closing up the position. As I say, that this side is getting slower and this side's getting quicker. Basically, if we want to put this in a more abstract uh, manner, that's really what's happening here. And in fact, after knight e4, uh, black central control and grip is increasing here. This takes out a central kind of defender and defender of the light squares. So you can see now black's getting an aggressive pawn formation. Uh, on queen takes e4, there's the nasty bishop c6 skewing the queen and knight. So for example here, bang, bishop takes f3. So black's gaining space and central control here. Bishop c6. This section of the board is still is being sped up basically. Uh, this is being locked down with f5. There's no there's no possibility of taking here because uh, this knight a4 was played. If g takes, bishop takes. This is just lethal. This bishop on this diagonal, for example, like this, knowing that the knight is pinned now. Um, a2 is under scrutiny. So if knight takes. That's mating. And um, here, on knight a4, this is just pathetic. This is this is just. I mean, what what happens here is though this this kind of thing happens here with queen c4, with the mate threat that would be like winning a piece. So a a2 is under big scrutiny in this position. Uh, in any case, um, so that is really unpleasant. So we have here this pawn being left to do that, just reinforce. E4, which is another bit of good news emerging for black. Knight A4, we have Queen B7, Knight G2, Bishop B5. So threat thing to skewer Queen and Rook, and also hitting the Queen, of course, the immediate threat. So black's really getting comfortable. King F7. <laughs> it's just torture. Maybe leaders just wanting to enjoy the position now. Uh, seeing what White's doing here. Knight E1, Rook D8. Knight c3, knight b6, knight c2. If the, the bishop's taken this position, the a file is horrible for a2. For example, like this and and the d file, it's uh, it's pretty unpleasant. Uh, so either the d file or the a file is is dangerous there. Uh, so okay, let's go back. Knight c2 was played, not knight takes b5. Um, something else to explore there for a moment in my notes. Here, the A file being explored here, rook a8, uh, eight, for example, here as a crushing variation to show the A file danger, chatmate. So there you go. So uh, knight c2 was played. We have bishop d3. It's just a really nasty position to be in with white, very passive. Just no attacking potential whatsoever. Black's king is totally laughing here, whilst white's king is scared. I mean, it's been slowed and sp sped here, slowed up, slowed down, sped up, basically, as far as I can see intuitively from this game. A5 trying to speed things up even more, open up even more. 92, 95, and the central control, the central pieces now are in, you know, their qualitative difference is, is evident here over white's minor pieces. Uh, Black puts now the pressure on the C file actually, and again the center is on the scrutiny at the same time. Rook C5, uh, doubling rooks. Now Rook B8 actually, Rook C2. Uh, here, uh, if for example Rook H1, then trying to speed up things and open up things with A4, this position is. Uh, Keeping an eye on d4 as well as the a file with queen a7. This position is really nasty. Things are falling to bits here. Black has a big edge there. So okay, rook c2 is is a really desperate move played in here in this position. Why? Why? Why give up the exchange? Why the Harry carry here? If uh, rook h1, black's going to speed up and open li lines with a4 basically. This this looks crushing. Say rook b1. Here, this position. 
uh, which we, we we've seen. Sorry, that is that is the one we've seen. Just to recap. Uh, so yeah, white ends up basically giving up the exchange here in this position with rook c2. Hmm. Okay, so that exchange is taken. So really, uh, it's just a massive advantage now for black. Black puts the pressure on the C file a bit more. That's white pieces are all defensive. Even more pressure on C2. Getting a nice pawn which locks down these pawns. One pawn locking down two pawns scenario. And now uh, D4 under pressure. The D file now under huge pressure. And Lila now tries to create a protected pass pawn by playing E5 to undouble. But also get rid of the blockader of this pawn. So creating a protected pass pawn is now the next thing on the to-do list of Leela. So these little positional plans, protected pass pawn now emerging. And here just white's doing absolutely nothing. Uh, white's just really passive here. Um, rooks come off, bishop e3. And these pawns are now liabilities in their own right. Uh, so here, centralization. Here, white resigned. Actually, white resigned here. These pawns seem to be sitting ducks, and they're just going to be taken up, taken off. For example, taking here, check. As an example, taking there is perfectly fine for black to do. Just mop up some pawns, and then use the two connected pass pawns here. I'll take you back to the final position. So, okay, from from my perspective. Um, I thought that was really interesting. I have played the semi slav myself in Blitz and I always wondered if you've got a really aggressive player casting Queenside. Uh, it's nice to have this this game as a kind of instruction manual that you want to open up lines but also keep an eye on the centre. So if you can do both at the same time, that's brilliant as this game shows. If you can completely freeze obviously the area around your king, slow it down there and speed up there. But ideally with this central pressure combined so you want to speed up, but also the central pressure. Keep keep an eye on that. If you can collapse white centre at any point as well. So it was I thought, very elegant pawn sacrifices. My phone's going off, which is not a timer for this video. So I'll say goodbye on that. Comments, questions, like, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.